The rear bumper on the CRX has always been droopy and let's just be realistic, nobody likes a droopy booty. Besides the fact that the bumper is hanging and it takes away from the overall look of the car and let's be honest, it's a 91 Honda with a lot of rust on it so this thing needs every little bit that it can get, right? So <laughs> uh, there's also a noise coming from the rear end and I haven't exactly pinpointed where it's coming from but I could tell it's somewhere in the rear bumper area and I did have a quick look underneath the bumper and there's nightmarish type of rust. So I can only imagine that the noise has to be coming from behind the bumper. So that's why I'm tearing all this off. It's kind of like when you're sleeping at night but you left your closet door open and your mind starts to play tricks on you. You know there's nothing there. You start to think what, what could be in there looking at me. Is, is it just me? Tell me if it's me. Please tell me it's me because that's exactly what goes through my mind. And it scares the hell out of me to the point where I have to get up and just close the door because my mind will not let me rest. Anyway, you know there's nothing inside that closet yet you can't help but think about it. It's the same thing with this bumper. It's kind of like I just don't want to think about it. <laughs> but there has to be a day where you face your fears and guys, that day is today. As you can see, I have out my inductive heater, bolt extractors, vice grips, pretty much anything I could throw at this thing. And it's just giving me hell and the job has only started. So guys, just please say three Hail Marys for me. You may have noticed that this is the first video on a two-part series of repairing rust on the rear bumper of the CRX. And you're probably thinking, whoa, way to cash in on this, huh? Really getting that YouTube money, huh? You fools, you forget that I have a 1991 Honda CRX in the Chicagoland area. This thing is riddled with rust. Nothing comes off, everything breaks, everything has to be torched off or replaced. Cut me some freaking slack. Enjoy the videos, sit down, be quiet, and hit that like button. I always place my jack stands on the trailing arms because the rocker panels on this car are just so rotted away that if you try to put any weight on those rocker panels, uh, that jack stand is just going to go right through the floor. So <laughs> uh, That's why I always put them on my trailing arms. Uh, as you can see, I'm trying to get the bumper off now, but then I noticed something that just quite isn't right. Someone drilled some holes into the body and ran two giant zip ties from the body of the car to the bumper. Yeah, so already bad signs, right? We are getting some bad juju off of this. And here goes those giant zip ties I was talking about. And here we could start to see the damage from the rust. You could see these two studs right here actually broken off in the body, but they, whoa! The car is just disintegrating. <laughs> Actually, I, I kind of expected this. That'll be fine. A little bit of Bondo, a little bit of Mako paint job, it'll be fine. By the way, I'm joking, we are not doing that. That's horrible. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, and you can see, again, on this side, the studs are broken off. They should stay attached to the bumper support, but they're actually just broken off inside the body. And this is why me struggling to remove the nuts on the other side earlier was all pointless. So this explains the noise I was having in the rear end. It was actually the bumper itself just bouncing around because there was really nothing to hold it up. Minus some giant zip ties. You can see this rear bumper support. It looks like it's been sitting at the bottom of an ocean for the past 15 years but nope that's just Chicago for you now some of these studs didn't have any nuts on the back side so I was able to just pry them out and I got pretty lucky with that but the ones that did have the nuts on the back side still and they're basically just welded in place due to corrosion I had no choice but to try to grind off the head of the stud which is what I'm doing here using a die grinder and I'm pretty much just using any tool that I have at my disposal to try to get this done and the plan is to knock the stud from the outside in so I hope that makes sense at this point, I'm making a ton of noise already and my neighbors are not too happy with me, but honestly, they could go kick rocks because they make noise all the time and I don't complain, so... <laughs> Here
here you can see the diffuse pot welds from factory and there is some surface for us on each of the welds it's nothing crazy it's not going through the metal or anything like that but i wanted to grind off that surface rust and just hit it with some crc just to protect the metal for now i'm not going to be painting any of this stuff while i'm doing all of this work back here so it's why i figured you know what the crc is just fine for right now i started removing any surface rust that i can in this corner and it's like the more rust I removed, the deeper I went into the rabbit hole. You know what? I kept looking at it and I could tell that the metal was pushed in. The more you grind off the rust, you'll easily see that the metal is already like paper thin here. So there isn't much you can do with the metal to try to work with it. So everywhere I'm putting X's with the Sharpie, that's where I could see that the metal is uh, just like concave. And it has to go. If we look at the rear right side, which is just my point of reference, you can see that the metal is perfectly flat. So there's no way around it. This metal had to go. That was a pretty good song i enjoyed that one you probably saw me flattening out that sheet metal that i just cut off and the reason for that is because it has some very intricate shapes in the sheet metal that i just can't really replicate easily so the easiest method is to just reuse it so i'm only going to be cutting out the sections that are bad and replacing those bad sections if that makes any sense so at this point you can see me removing the tail lights and the reason for that is to not cause any damage to them well that's the idea we have to get to these two holes that were drilled into the body where someone put the large zip ties that's why i'm removing the tail lights but as you can see one of the bolts didn't want to come out so i had to heat up the bolt to get it out and of course it melted the plastic on the tail light which is unfortunate but i really saw no other way of getting this thing out something had to give i'll find a way to fix it later it's not that big of an issue Now that I got this broken piece removed, I had to remove some of the interior panels so I could get access to the inside of the sheet metal because I'm going to have to work from the inside. <laughs> I've seen that about a dozen times while editing this video and it still makes me laugh. So I'm just hitting the panel from the inside out, trying to get out any damage that I might have caused while I was trying to remove the panel, you know, like uh, bending the sheet metal and whatnot. So here I am removing the paint on the outside of the panel because we're going to start welding all these things up. And 
I disconnected my battery. Some people say it's a good idea. Some people say it doesn't matter, but it only takes a minute of my time, so why not? I'm gonna be using these like copper backing plates and they're not really foolproof, but they do definitely help whenever you're welding on thin sheet metal like this. Here you can see that the weld I just did, it's not horrible at all, but the problem comes when you start to grind it down so it's flush with the rest of the panel. All of a sudden, you're going to start blowing through. You're going to have the metal so thin that you're going to start to see little pinholes, and it just becomes a headache, and that's the whole thing I was fighting here, just back and forth. No matter how many times I welded it, I kept seeing tiny little pinholes, and it just kept aggravating me. Here I am just grinding off some more of the paint so I could put my welding clamp on here just so I could get a good ground somewhere. And I just kept on attempting to plug up these holes but I kept running into that same exact issue that no matter how good the welds look, once you grind it back, you're going to have little pinholes. And yes, I know this large angle grinder is a bit too much and it's probably putting too much heat into the panel. But it's all I have for now. I did end up ordering like these 2 inch small roll like this for this exact purpose. But they hadn't come in yet, so the angle grinder is all I had to work with. For the section where I removed that sheet metal, you could see what the drill actually went all the way through. And I made a few holes, and some of them I just made like indentations in the sheet metal behind it. So I want to use the welder to try to plug up all of these holes. And again, using that copper plate and a magnet to hold the copper plate in place. And of course, you could also use clamps or something like that. So here I am just trying to plug up all of those holes that I created. So here goes the holes that I welded up. And as you can see, after grinding them down, they don't look that bad. But I can tell you right now that they are horribly thin in the areas where you have to grind them. And on this side, you can see there's even pinholes where I put the light behind it and you can see right through them. And this is like my third time attempting to weld them up. So it's not going to happen with a welder. At this point, what I'm going to do is either put some sort of seam sealer over them or a panel bonding adhesive to cover up the little pinholes. And that's it. Because like I said, you're not going to get it done with the welder. It's just going to keep happening over and over. So what I did is I grabbed the panel that I just cut out and threw it in the sandblast just so we could get a better look at what we're working with. So here's everything that I'm cutting out. I'm going to cut straight down from here, go to the left, and then straight down from here, go to the right, and then go up. So anything that's a weird or intricate design is what I'm trying to keep. And everything in the center that is just flat metal, that's going to go. So as you can see, I picked up some sheet metal from my local home improvement place. I'm just measuring the type of metal that came off of the car so I can match it up with the sheet metal that I picked up. Because I have a few different gauges here. So you can see this is reading as 22 gauge. It's on the CRX. And before I start cutting anything, I wanted to just use a Sharpie just to get a rough idea, make sure I'm cutting the right places. And for some reason, I started cutting this sheet metal out. And then it was at this point that Jonathan realized he messed up. I cut the wrong side. Not a big deal. That side had to be cut out anyway, but let's go to the correct side now and just cut out the piece and we'll make a template.
have this pneumatic hole punch slash flange maker and I'm gonna use it to punch a hole in this panel right here and the reason for that is because I plan on doing some plug because I plan on doing some plug welds right here uh, the only thing I don't like about this tool is it puts it pretty close to the edge as you can see and on top of that the hole isn't that large so I'm gonna have to enlarge that hole just a little bit now that I got my sheet metal cut out, I'm going to go ahead and weld it into the original panel. Now, I'm not going to weld it in completely at this point. I just want to give it a few tacks so it's being held in place. And then I'll cut out the other section, which is right here. And again, use it to make a new template and pretty much rinse and repeat so I can get both of the new pieces of sheet metal welded onto the original piece. On the first day that I started welding up these holes back here, I ran out of time so I couldn't finish it. So you can still see I have some holes back here to plug up. But I also want to plug up where I cut into the rest of the sheet metal using my cutoff disc. And you can just see like the slot lines or the straight lines in the panel. So that's not really too big of an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of all of that right now. And again, just using that copper plate as a backer. And uh, you'll see how it turns out once I get rid of all those cut lines going into the panel. And really that's just a result of using the angle grinder which had too large of a disc on it. But it's all I had to work with at the moment. And yes, I know I shouldn't be using a hat like that for welding because it can easily catch on fire. I'm aware of that. I have a proper welding hat. I just couldn't find it. So as you can see, I have both of the new panels welded into the original one. And what I'm doing here is... Uh, pretty much opening the holes of where the studs are going to go through and try to get them roughly to what the original one looks like so as you can see all the welds aren't perfect but this is more like a rough draft i'm gonna have to go over each of these welds so that's a project for tomorrow morning and that's pretty much what i'm doing right here i'm going over each of the welds once again to really lay on some material right there and give me something to grind off to make the surface look a little bit nicer So after the second round of welding, here's what I'm left with. The back, as you can see, I did try to grind on the welds, but nothing crazy. I really focused on the front side, and it looks a lot better in my opinion. So I'm just going to go ahead and chuck it into the sandblaster right now so we could get a better look at it. And don't judge my clothes. I work from home, and it's all about staying comfortable, right? So <laughs> anyway, here goes the panel straight out of the sandblaster, and as you can see, it's looking a lot better. The back side wasn't too concerned with it. Obviously, no one can see any of it. But once you do all the body work, no one's really going to notice that anything was done to this. So the front side is looking really good. And now it's time for some self-etching primer. I gave this thing like three healthy coats of primer. And I actually waited like a full 24 hours to get to the next step. Not that it needed it. It's just I didn't have time to get to the CRX anytime sooner. All this stuff took days to do. So I'm just cuffing up the primer here to prepare it for a coat of paint. The next step is to put some seam sealer on the back welds and this is why I was never really too concerned with grinding them down and making them look pretty because I knew they were going to get covered up. I'm using this beige stuff because that's what the CRX came with from factory. They sell it in black also but the black isn't what the CRX came with and black is also harder to cover up when it comes down to painting it. Like I said earlier, the seam sealer is only going to go wherever the welds are and it's going to cover all this stuff up. That's where there's really no need to go crazy with trying to dress up your welds. And as you can see right here, I'm going to use an acid brush to really brush in the seam sealer into every little nook and cranny into the welds. Because what happens is, this is a problem I have with welding things, is it creates little voids and that's where moisture ends up getting trapped and that's why panels that were previously welded together end up rotting away. So by forcing the seam sealer into the little nooks and crannies, it really helps to make sure that moisture doesn't get into any of these things. Plus, it just gives it like a OEM appearance, if you get know what I mean. I mean, look at this panel. It already looks like something that just came off of a car. <laughs> Now that I'm done applying the seam sealer, I pretty much put this aside and let it sit for a complete 24 hours and I just decided to move on to other things because there's plenty of work to be done. So as you can see, I'm just using a wire brush on my drill here and I'm trying to remove any surface rust that I can because I want to spray the inside of this channel right here with some CRC to protect the metal. 
because sure you could get to it once the panel is in place with that little access hole but it's just so much easier right now and i'm just really going to go to town on this thing because realistically no one's ever going to come in here again so why not just really douse it you know what i mean and i'm using my air gun very with very light pressure to try to move around the fluid and try to get it into like some of the cavities way in the back back there and as you can see i'm just using a piece of cardboard here with some tape to protect that new crc that i just sprayed inside of there while it's still curing and drying i don't want any of this stuff getting inside of there moving on to the actual bumper i want to try to salvage these license plate holders if possible but i need to get them off the bumper first uh, so have a really good look at them to even see if they're usable but before i could do that i have to remove the actual bumper support and this thing is just in horrible condition and the bolts that are screwed through the bumper have been on here for as old as this car is so at this point i'm just gonna do whatever i can to get these things out of here even if i have to resort to heat which isn't ideal when you're working with plastic for obvious reasons but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do At this point, I'm just looking at this thing like, what the hell? And really thinking about all the choices I've made in my life. And thanks to the CRX community on Facebook, I was able to find a rear bumper support that looks a million times better than the one that came off of my car. Of course, it's from a different state. Uh, you're not going to find anything that looks this clean in the Chicagoland area. So I was really lucky and grateful to find something like this. Now let's move on to the panel that we put the seam sealer on. It's been a full 24 hours. Now it's time to paint the panel and I'm going to use uh, paintscratch.com with this is not a sponsor or anything like this. I've been buying from them for years. You could order just a rattle can like this and it's supposed to be real red. As you can see it says on the sticker 1991 Honda. So you could give them your paint code for pretty much any car and they could put it in a rattle can for you. The downside is it's expensive. This one rattle can after shipping was about $45. Yes, I know. You could also get way more paint. It doesn't have to be a rattle can. You could get it in the pint, a gallon, whatever. Uh, so it's pretty neat that you could get stuff like this. I just thought I'd let you guys know about it. 
I'm giving this thing three separate coats of paint, waiting like five minutes between each coat. If you're wondering why I masked off the edges like that, it's because this panel is going to get welded in eventually, so if I put paint on that edge, it's just going to end up burning off, so there's really no point. So at this point, now that it's all painted the way I want it, I'm just going to let it sit and dry. Now, you're going to call me crazy, but honestly, all that painting and all that work I just did, a lot of it's going to come back off. Yeah, it's it's weird but the reason why i did it like that is because i want the inside of the panel where no one could ever really get access to i want it to be painted i know that's weird uh but if you go to any body shop or you you know have anyone else do it they'll just slap the panel on they're welded in place and the inside metal most likely won't be protected and it is what it is but because it's my car and i'm doing it how i want you could take as many steps as you want to try to protect the metal so that's what i'm doing don't judge me <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and bolt this up as you can see like I'm doing right now. And I'm using a sharpie from the backside to mark out uh, the rail of the car. And I'll show you in just a second. I actually had this thing marked out earlier and some of you may have noticed it. And that's going to show me exactly where I have to remove all of the paint that we just laid down. So everything inside of this pattern right here has to come off. And I need to find a way to find out where this line is at for the rail. So I'm just using tape as you can see and I'm going to push the panel up against it and wherever the tape lands that's where I know I could make the rest of my sharpie lines and there we have it. So everything within the black sharpie lines has to come off. Now if you're thinking to yourself well what's this guy talking about because he just said he wants this metal protected yet he's going to go ahead and grind off all the primer and the paint he just applied. Well this is where I changed my mind because initially I was going to weld this panel in. My mind's telling me no, but my body, my body's telling me to use panel bonding adhesive. But I know damn well that two panels that get plug weld together or spot weld, whatever you want to call it, even with weld through primer, which I don't have much faith in, it still lets moisture in between the panels eventually and corrosion happens. So. I ditched the whole plug weld thing and I decided to use panel bonding adhesive. That's right, this thing is going to get glued together and I've used this stuff plenty of times and this stuff is excellent. It actually holds stronger or can hold stronger than welding something together. And wherever you apply this panel bonding adhesive, it has to go to bare metal. What? And that bare metal that this thing is covering is never going to rust. So keep that in mind. That's why everything that I'm grinding off of the panel I have to make sure I cover 100% of that bare metal with the panel bonding adhesive. As I just showed you, this thing has a 90 minute working time which is more than enough and also you can see that this thing uses a special gun applicator in order to use it, meaning you can't just buy the glue and expect to use it, you have to buy the applicator gun. Here goes the tips that are supplied with the adhesive and as you can see, it mixes the two parts as it comes down this tube. And whenever you first start using it, you may think, oh, why is he just wasting this stuff right here if it's that expensive? You're actually not supposed to use like this first, uh, I don't know, little poop pile if you want. You're not supposed to use it. You're supposed to just put it on a small panel like this and discard it because this stuff needs time to mix. I'm just going to go ahead and put it anywhere where there is bare metal. And I'm using an acid brush to go ahead and spread all of this stuff out. Now that I'm done with the panel, I'm going to go over to the car and start applying the adhesive over here. Keep in mind, I have to cover anything that is bare metal. And the reason why I'm just kind of uh, going to town on this thing is because there's going to be gaps. There's some inconsistencies. So you want the panel bonding adhesive to take up those gaps. And anywhere where I don't have the panel bonding adhesive, remember we sprayed the CRC inside of this whole channel. So all of that's going to be protected as well. Now you don't need to go crazy and start to worry about any of this stuff. Don't forget you have a 90 minute work time so you have plenty of time to work with all of this.
once you're done applying all of the adhesive i know your first instinct is to put the two panels together but really what you should do is take the time to discard the mixing tube that's on your adhesive and put the cap back on it you really want to clean up your mess because if you forget about this you could potentially let this whole cartridge go to waste and it's expensive you don't want to waste it so now it's time to put the two panels together and as you can see i'm trying to put the panel on as flat as possible without sliding it up or down or basically any type of movement you want them to make contact and just keep it as steady as possible i'm using the bolts here to keep the panel in place and to apply even pressure across the panel you can see the three holes that i drilled into the panel to plug weld them previously and now they just have panel bonding adhesive oozing out of them so I just decided to use the acid brush to kind of move that glue around and kind of work as a plug weld but made out of panel bonding adhesive. I ended up drilling two holes in a panel because on this corner the panel was still kind of springy. It didn't want to stay flat against the rest of the car. So there's nothing wrong with that. You could absolutely drill little tiny holes and run screws into the panels. That's the main thing about this panel bonding adhesive. You want nice good clamping pressure. Uh, for it to cure and cure right and make sure it's gonna hold nice and strong So as you can see I put tape between everything so that the panel bonding adhesive doesn't stick to any of the nuts and bolts I have in here Before I close out this video I want to give a big shout out to the people who have donated via patreon not everyone on this list is a current supporter, but at one point they did donate and I really appreciate that. If I missed your name, I'm sorry. Please get in contact with me and I'll be sure to include your name in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. It was a ton of work, but I really enjoyed making this one. I had a blast making it, as you could probably tell. And uh, I hope you guys come along for the next video. So, catch you guys next time.